Hello, I'm Kevin Houston, and this is the first of three videos to cover mathematical induction, known simply as induction. In this first video, we'll look at the basic theory behind it and an example. Induction is applied when we have an infinite number of statements indexed by the natural numbers. So, for example, we could have 6 to the power n minus 1 is divisible by 5 for all n in the natural numbers. Here, n is the index. It is not sufficient to prove this for a sample of natural numbers, whether that sample involves hundreds, millions, or even billions of numbers. We have to prove it for all n. Induction is like domino toppling. This is where dominoes are stood on their ends in such a way that when you push the first one over, it knocks the second domino over, that in turn knocks the third down, and so on. Provided the dominoes are arranged so that each knocks down the next, then all of them will fall. The process of induction is similar. We prove that if the kth statement is true, then the k plus oneth statement is also true, i.e. the truth of one statement implies the truth of the next one. This is analogous to one domino knocking down the next one. So if the first statement is true, push the first domino, then all the statements are true, all the dominoes get knocked down. Let's begin to make the idea precise. First, the principle of mathematical induction requires that we have a sequence of statements indexed by the natural numbers. Of course, there are plenty of these. To show how versatile induction is, we shall use examples from diverse areas of mathematics – divisibility, summation, inequalities… OK, example 1. The expression 6 to the power n minus 1 is divisible by 5 for all n in n. We say a is divisible by b if there is no remainder when we divide a by b. So 30 is divisible by 5 and by 3, etc. You can learn more in chapter 27 of my book. Second example, we have that the summation of i, where i goes from 1 up to n, is equal to 1 half of n times n plus 1 for all n in the natural numbers. And the third example is the inequality 2 to the power of n minus 1 is less than or equal to n factorial. This is true for all n in the natural numbers. Here, as n is not equal to 0, we can take n factorial to be the product of the first n natural numbers. More will be said about n factorial in a later video. After reading these, did you behave like a mathematician, stop the video and try out a few cases to check that the statements were at least plausible? Let's check some cases. For the statement 6 to the power n minus 1 is divisible by 5, we have n equals 1, 6 to the power 1 minus 1 is 6 minus 1, which is 5, and that's obviously divisible by 5. For n equals 2, this time we end up with 36 minus 1, and that's 35, and that's also divisible by 5. We can try n equals 3, we end up with 215, that's also divisible by 5. Let's try n equals 10. And in this case, after a bit of calculation, we end up with a number ending in 5, and so indeed, this is divisible by 5. Notice that I did the first few cases and then threw in a higher case. These cases would seem to indicate that the statement is reasonable. We haven't found a counterexample yet. Check the statements in the other two examples for small n to help convince yourself that they are true. Now, this type of reasoning may seem pointless, you could ask, aren't we going to prove the statements are true in a minute? Well, yes. However, what it does is engage the brain in the statement and ensures that we see what is there, not what we think is there. Note that these calculations form part of the exploration of the problem and would not be included in a submitted solution. We will use the notation an to denote the statement for a particular n. For the statement 6 to the power n minus 1 is divisible by 5, we have that a3 is just 6 to the power 3 minus 1 is divisible by 5. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the grand theorem, the principle of mathematical induction. Let a n be an infinite collection of statements with n in the natural numbers. Suppose that 1, a1 is true, and 2, a k implies a k plus 1, for all k in n. Then, a n is true for all n in the natural numbers. The first condition is called the initial case or step, and the second condition is called the inductive step. 
One corresponds to pushing the first domino and two corresponds to having the dominoes set up so that each one knocks down the next. Assuming that AK is true for some K, note the sum, is called the inductive hypothesis. Let's see the principle in action. Our first example is a real classic of mathematics. What is the sum of the first n numbers? First recall the definition. For a function f we have that the summation of fi from i equals 1 to n is just f1 plus f2 plus f3 and all the way up to fn minus 1 plus fn. For example, the summation of i where i goes from 1 to n is just 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to n minus 1 plus n. Another example is the summation of i squared where i goes from 1 to n and that's just 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared and so on all the way up to n squared. Okay we shall prove that the summation of i where i goes from 1 up to n is equal to 1 half of n times n plus 1 for all n in the natural numbers. This statement is indexed by n so we can call a n the statement the summation of i where i goes from 1 up to n equals 1 half of n times n plus 1. Our aim is to show that a n is true for each n. Let us check condition 1 of the theorem, the initial case. That is, we want a1 to be true. Remember, this corresponds to pushing the first domino. This is easy. When n equals 1, the summation of i, where i goes from 1 to n, is just the summation of i, where i goes from 1 to 1. And well, that's just 1. And then if we look at the other side of the equation, we just have 1 half of n times n plus 1, which when we put in n equals 1, we get 1. So a1 is true, i.e. the summation of i, where i goes from 1 to n, is a half of n times n plus 1, for n equals 1. Now for the inductive step. ak implies ak plus 1 for all k and n. We want to show that if the statement ak is true, then ak plus 1 is true as well. This is the same as domino number k knocking over domino k plus 1. It does not correspond to knocking over all the dominoes. Let us assume that ak is true for some arbitrary k. So we could have k equals 10, k equals 50, or k equals 22 billion. This is a single k, the point is that it is arbitrary. We make no assumptions for any other number n, just this particular k. That is, we assume that the summation of i, where i goes from 1 up to k, is equal to 1 half of k times k plus 1. We investigate what implications this has for a k plus 1. First, we write down the form of a k plus 1, just to see where we're going. Here, we replace n by k plus 1. So everywhere in the equation that we're trying to prove, we'll put in k plus 1 in place of n. So we get i going from 1 up to k plus 1, taking the summation of i, and that equals 1 half of k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1. How would a mathematician prove such an equality? Mathematicians know that we should pick the complicated side of an expression and reduce it to get the other side. In a proof by induction involving a sum, the complicated side is usually the one with a summation i.e. complicated means having the most terms in this case. So we have the summation of i where i goes from 1 up to k plus 1 is equal to the summation of i where i goes from 1 up to k plus k plus 1. This just follows from the definition of summation. Now this equals 1 half of k times k plus 1 plus k plus 1 by the inductive hypothesis i.e. ak is assumed true. Now we can just simplify this and we'll get a half of k plus 1 times k plus 1 and then that works out to be 1 half of k plus 2 times k plus 1. In other words 1 half of k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1 just by rearranging. And this is what we wanted to find. Thus we have shown that if the summation of i where i goes from 1 to k is equal to 1 half k times k plus 1 is true i.e. a k is true, then the summation of i, where i goes from 1 to k plus 1,
is equal to one half of k plus one times k plus one plus one is true, i.e. a k plus one is true. In other words, we have shown that all the dominoes are lined up so that if the kth falls, then the k plus one -th falls. Thus, by the principle of mathematical induction, the statement is true for all n in the natural numbers. Okay, some remarks. Remark number one, note this structure. We assume that a k is true for an arbitrary k. We tease apart the a k plus one case so that a k can be used. We don't assume that the a k plus one case is also true. This is a common error made by beginners. We show that it is true when a k is true. Remark two, another problem for novice mathematicians is that induction seems to violate the principle that we should not assume what we are trying to prove. It should be noted that the statement we wish to prove is about something holding for all n. In our assumption, in condition two, we assume that the statement holds for one particular n, which we call k. OK, that one particular n is arbitrary. It is absolutely any n you like, but it is still just one. By itself, no other assumptions made. It is vital to grasp this subtlety if induction is to be applied confidently. More examples will be dealt with in part two. In the meantime, here is a summary. The principle of mathematical induction is useful for proving statements indexed by the natural numbers. Think of applying induction when you see statements indexed by the natural numbers. Induction is used extensively in mathematics, for example, summations, inequalities, divisibility. To use induction, first prove A1, then show AK implies AK plus one for some arbitrary but fixed K in the natural numbers. Remember, it's some K, not all K. Thanks for watching.